How does Dwarf Fortress compare to other computer games? In casual games, the menu, the game instructions are easy to comprehend. You get your fun, you consume it, and you're quite content. In hardcore games, the instructions are okay, but the game doesn't deliver the fun that easily. It wants you to fight for it, and you fight for it hard until you beat the game. Oh, how sweet that hard and fun tastes! Well, in Dwarf Fortress, the game instructions are very confusing. And the game doesn't really care whether you want to fight for your fun or not. It just wants you to lose. Again and again. In lots of different ways. But the losing is fun. And it's spectacular. And eventually, you'll learn how to fight back. And you'll be enjoying it. The fun you'll find then doesn't compare to anything you have experienced before. And you will have loads of such fun in your fortress, which menaces with spikes. Welcome, future fortress overseers. Dwarf Fortress is an extraordinary game. It is strictly non-commercial, closed source, freeware, funded only by the donations of its fans. It is being developed by two brothers, Tan and Zach Adams, who have made it their lifetime's work. Unsurprisingly, the development roadmap is long. Every year the game gets better and better, providing unprecedented, highly replayable fantasy world experience. Each time in a unique setting, coming up with stories for storytellers, inspiration for artists, and entertainment for the observers. It lies all in their imagination, because the game as such looks like this. No graphics, just ASCII art. People have jokingly compared it to the encrypted matrix. But with the help of the Dwarf Fortress modding community, the game can get much easier to read. Either way, you'll realize that even without fancy graphics, it offers an excessive amount of information on nearly every detail of the gameplay. You can play the game as a Fortress Overseer, the so-called Fortress Mode or Dwarf Mode, where you establish a sustainable fortress for your dwarves, you exploit natural resources by mining, farming, hunting. As you create wealth, your fortress becomes famous and starts to attract the attention of your allies and your enemies. You try to protect your fortress as long as possible or lose it in a variety of ways. You can also play as an adventurer, where you control a single hero, roam the world, talk to people, find some companions and have the freedom to do whatever you like. Search treasures, hunt monsters, protect villages, visit fortresses, including your own ones, become a lord. Ultimately, you can retire your adventurer or die in a variety of ways. Accompanying and enriching both the fortress and the adventurer mode is the legends mode where you can read up on the historical background of places, figures and things. The game takes place in a randomly generated, unique world which can host a large number of your fortresses and adventures. When such world is being created, the game realistically simulates its geology. It creates mountains, stone layers, ores, minerals, rivers and lakes, oceans. It creates biomes where they would naturally occur with corresponding vegetation, wildlife and underground caverns. It simulates weather and seasons. The world is then populated with fantasy civilizations like dwarves, humans, elves, goblins, fantasy humanoid creatures, for example butterfly men. When they settle, they have to face monsters and beasts, dragons, rocks, etins, minotaurs. Some are successful and found villages, cities, fortresses, build roads, bridge rivers. They trade with each other, establish a network of complex diplomatic relationships, make allies, fight wars against their enemies. They persist and expand. Some civilizations are not so successful and fade away or dwindle in their hideouts until they fall. But they are not forgotten. 
As the years of this world pass, its legends are being written. The game takes record of hundreds of thousands of historical events, such as births and deaths of historical figures and their genealogical relationships. It keeps track of the foundation of places, formation and movement of groups, for example armies, bandit gangs, wandering performer groups. It records such events as battles, sports competitions and their outcomes, artifact creations, artifact thefts and recoveries. It lays before you a unique, randomly generated world teeming with life, with hundreds of years of history. As you play your fortresses or your heroic adventurers in this world, you inevitably become part of this history. Because all your actions are persistent, with all the good and bad consequences, directly or indirectly influencing the course of this world's history. The longer you play in a world, the more you'll play for a particular civilization, the more you'll be able to notice this. And when you lose, you'll remember and realize that losing is fun.